We've covered order of operations in a separate tutorial. In this one, I want to look specifically at entering equations and order of operations in Excel. So first, let's review that order. Parentheses first. Deal with what's inside the parens first. Then handle any exponents. Then multiply, divide. Finally, add and subtract. That's the hierarchy. Especially in Excel, if you want to be certain of a specific order, use parentheses to force it. First example I want to look at. Very simple. Linear equation. Y is equal to A plus BX. Given A, B, and X, we can find Y in several ways. As it turns out, this first one, A plus B times X, is OK. Excel uses the order of operations, too, and it will multiply first, so that's OK. If you want to be sure, feel confident about it, use the parens. That's definite. Do not, do not use absolute numbers when entering data in a function or an equation. Point to the cells. Make use of the power of Excel, so if the variable changes, your results change. Okay, let's look at a little bit more involved example. Y is equal to A plus B plus C quantity squared minus X cubed. You can enter this in one cell, being very careful to use parens to define your order. Note that parens are required for the second component, the quantity squared. Alternately, when you have a very complicated equation with several components, it can be wise to break it into parts, calculate each separately, and then combine them. In this example, I've made three components, even though component 1 is just A. Component 2 is the B plus C quantity squared. Component 3 is the X cubed. With these three calculated separately, combining them is easy and much less error prone. We're going to be presented with several formulas in this course with three, four, five, even more components. It's very easy to make a mistake trying to solve the whole formula in one cell. Breaking it into parts, solving each separately, and then combining the results is far safer. You need to get in the habit of using the cell references.